Hello and welcome back to Watch Talk. Um, on the first video, we um, took this out, took this um, old watch out of the case, and I was probably talking more than I should have been. But it's um, time to rip it down. I think it's a Cadola, Cadala. It's a French, French. Um, it says made in France on the case back. It's a Swiss movement, seventeen jewel movement. Um, so let's start the the tear down. So what I think I would do initially is I'll take the um, take the power out of the mainspring and we'll start with that. That there, the click is there. So what we will do and the uh, ratchet wheel is is here. What I reckon we'll do is maybe get a smaller screwdriver or that little there, yeah, that will do. Now, let down the mainspring, we just mm, turn the crown in, in the way that you wind it. So it's obviously uh, clockwise, so towards me the way I'm holding it. And then as you turn it, you've noticed that the, um, the click rotates. Just get your, let's get some peg wood in there rather than, um, let's do it the other way. Get some pegwood in there so we don't. Um... Now, as I said to you on some other videos, I, I sharpen these up. I've got a, I've got a, three different types. I usually use one that's more of a um, like a spade, like a wedge. The other one I have is is sharpened up. So I have the spade one here. You see that? That's got the rotic at the end of it. So it's the spade one. Then I've got these ones here that are sharpened up. But then I just I just take the tip off, and that's good to hold down. The um the plates as you as you're screwing them down just to they don't slip, and then I do these ones here really sharp, and I just went out and I sharpened them up. And the way I get them sharp like that is I and I've said this before, but I'll say it again because I don't know where you guys are at, and uh, how long you've been watching for if you've been watching at all or if anybody's watching now. Um, I just put these into my my cordless drill, and you know, as she's spinning around like that, I turn on my uh, either my um, bench grinder or my um, belt sander, and as that's that's turning, I just you know whiz it along, and it gets a nice little fine point on it. So there's a little bit of a tip if you or or you can just get a blade out and go for your life, whatever you want to do. So then we turn that until there, hold that back, and then just let the um. I oh, you probably can't see much here. Let me just try to just try to let the um, the crown just just rub through, rub through or slip through your fingers. You know, just a little bit. You don't have to let it. You don't want to anything to go too fast. Right now, that's that's stopped, and you see the balance has stopped as well. Let's pull that out. There's no power. I just tend to just you know give it a. A little bit more by hand just to make sure there's no power. So all the power's out of there. So we're safe to um safe to pull stuff apart um and avoid um avoid things flying around the place. So the first thing we will attack um well we can probably take the balance out. Let me just have a look just so we don't damage that. I might take the balance out and I'll just let you sit there and watch. I'll just, and you know what? Between the first and second video, I had my act together. And, um, well, I thought I had my act together, but I had a simple little compartment to put the balance wheel in just so we don't, have, we don't damage it. But it's okay. It's all right. We were, we're grown adults here, right? We were, well, you know, that's uh, questionable. But anyway, we'll get through. Let me just get my, where is it? Sorry, it's probably echoing in here because you know, as as you know, you may, you may know, I am um, set up in my laundry, so the old balance tack. I must set up in my laundry, so there is going to be some echo, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. I haven't got the. Uh, the luxury of having my own dedicated space, but anyway, we cope. Yeah, so shall I, shall I, shall I rip the balance off? 
Yeah, you know what? We'll take the balance off and do that first. So let's get ourselves organised. These screws are a little bit bigger than a little bit bigger than in the in the uh, Salita movement. So we'll make sure we not don't grab one that's too big till we scratch it. But yeah, that one there's okay. Is that going to be okay for the rest of the movement? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, she'll be right. She's a one twenty red tip one. Like I've said before, with your screwdrivers. Try to get the best ones that you can afford or justify because they will they will pay dividends. Right. That's that screw. And like I said before, on this balance tack, and not that I'm gonna not that I'm gonna put the balance on the balance tack, but I'm just gonna put that screw. On a bit of rotter coat on that balance tack so so I don't lose it there we go and because I don't like putting the balance on the balance tack just just um, makes me nervous anyway there's a little bit of a indent or a little bit of a where you can just get under with your screwdriver and just ever so slightly just tease it up and yet, to be honest, I mean, this this movement, like I said before, it, it, it's, it has to be 50s, right? And it's just pretty clean. I don't know whether she's been serviced or... I don't know if she's been serviced. I didn't want to come off too easily. Oh, I just want to be very careful. I don't muck it up. There we go. Balance is off. Try to grab it. Again, try to grab it with the, um, the balance and the, uh, the, the balance cock. Have a look, let's just put her down. She looks all right. Then again, I'm not a, I don't, you know, just wanna put it, make sure, just try to get it into the, into the, into the jaw hole and just see if it's, um, the, this, um, the coils are, are even and nothing really, you know, out of whack. She looks really nice, which is, reassuring or positive right so let's just grab that and i will put that where will I, yeah, I will put that in them in its own little compartment for the time being and we'll put that as far away as possible so we don't knock it and put the screw away with it as well now it's got a, now on the other side it did have a 28 i think on it yeah 28 and it looks like a, a, a an F F F. It's if anyone knows what movement that is, I'll write it down. Where's my pen? It's a let me just keep give you something to look at. F F, so it's a F F like that. F F and then there's a 20 out and the FF is up, you know, looks like it's probably the person that the manufacturer of the I don't know. And again it's got that on right here on the on the main plate it's got 28 ff so maybe it's just a movement number 28 so that's just want to just check the the palette looks all right in there just want to have a little bit of a look how it goes on you know and i might just take i might just take the palette off as well palette bridge and palette off because the, like I said, like I've said before, and I'll probably say it again and again, and you probably get sick and tired of me talking about the same stuff. But I really haven't got that much more new to say. Um, especially on these movements are very, very similar. This one and the Salita one, both manual wine, no, no complication. Um, but just generally in all watches, make sure it's tight. Just generally in all watches, the um, the balance and this um, palette assembly or palette fork is just the most delicate thing on these watches and you don't want to don't want to muck them up and it's pretty clever like just about everything like under that see in there there's a little oh i know i'm wasting time but it's just you know you can just see there where was it, where was it? yeah just there you can just see there's a little cut out and that's where you get your, you know, your, your, when the when the balance is on, 
you just get under there with your screwdriver and lift it up. And the same thing with this, um, I don't want to tilt it too much in case it falls, here you go. So that's, your, that's your obviously your, your pallet um, bridge. And there's your, your pallet there, the, the, the fork end of it. Now some people call that whole assembly the pallet fork. And then some people call it the pallet. Um, and I, I saw somewhere where that end bit, where is it? The end bit there, that's the actual fork. Now I don't know, I'm not don't don't quote me on it. But um that there is the fork, not the whole assembly, but people use it interchangeably, I don't know. But anyway, see how there is that little there? That little notch to get under. So just put your uh Put your screwdriver under that and just ever so gently just give it a bit of 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 a pry up a bit of a tease and that's given way but she just didn't come all the way up why not you want to be really you want to be really careful you like i said before you snap just want a quick look you I mean, that hole is just... I wonder whether you can even see how small that hole is. See how small that hole is? I'm going to get a bit of white paper under there. Here you go. See how small that hole is? I mean, that is like... You know, so the pivot is actually... The pivot in that pallet is smaller than that, obviously, to fit in there, so... That's how small it is. If you break them, like I've said before, you break them, it's game over. You just might as well just walk away. All right, that's the that's the uh, oops, that's the pallet there. You just give it a little bit of an, you won't see this maybe on the thing, but you just give it a bit of an inspection and. Uh, and these these um my goggles won't bring anything up, but you can you can you can you can make out that the um you can at least see that the um pivots are okay. So put that aside, and I might just give it a bit of a blow with the uh, puffer, and there's just yeah, just to uh, just to get your jollies there for a few moments. All right, so that's okay. Everything seems to be turning away, and now, now that's the same parts try as I had the balancing. So again, we'll put that aside a long way away, so we don't. And then we'll just give our tweezers a bit of a clean with the old pith wood and our um, screwdriver. There is a bit of there is a bit of stuff coming off that. You know, it's dirty as all, but but it's still shiny, but it's still dirty. Just wondering whether that's oil on there whether it's just shining no, I don't know I couldn't tell you couldn't tell you all right so I've got that off so that's um, release some nervousness okay so all right okay there right. moving right along get our parts tray opened up ready for the um, the main the main bridge um, train train gear bridge so this has got um, two screws on it so make sure it's tight yeah two screws on it just give them a bit of a an unscrew put that in there and then we'll take the other one off and I think good good practice is probably wearing finger cots even when you're dismantling, at least on at least on this hand. You can hear the uh, my, my daughter and her friend carrying on in the background there. Right, and again, and I'll show you this because you know, just so you can have a look. See again. Uh, yikes! And my under there again under that bridge, there's that little where. Uh, recess that little that little pivot point that you can just get under and pry up that um that bridge and you know always use them where you can because you know there's not going to be or the likelihood of there being anything um important under it like you know like a wheel or a 
is very remote. So we just take this off very careful. Very carefully take it off. Why is she just giving me a bit of, she's just sticking a little bit. I just, yeah, okay, that's all right. She's just hanging on to that, that, that dial foot. Just, it was just hanging on that little, oops. Have I knocked you out of, no, I haven't. Um, there, yeah, there's a little, no, dial foot. I'm not dial foot, um, bridge foot. Just have a look, turn her over. Like, like, you know, like you saw in the other movement that I did sometimes. Things just like to stick on those. Although there shouldn't be anything on there, but you just you just don't know there could be could be something there. You know, if you're inexperienced like me, then you know you don't assume anything. Okay. So that looks okay. And what I will do because I am and although I am filming it, I'll just take a bit of a picture. Sorry about this. And this Always good to take pictures of what you're doing because you know all you have to do is get something in wrong, and then we just take the uh, take the words off in order. Now these these are sort of not that difficult to get right. You know, it's I mean that one being the the fourth wheel or the the seconds uh, wheel or with the seconds hand going. You can see it's distinguishable from the other ones because it's got that it's got the large. Can you see it? Yeah, boy, let's just bring it up. You see, it's got the, the long shaft on it. And that long shaft there is obviously goes straight through the center, goes through there, all the way through to the to the top of the watch. And the, uh, the that's why it says skinny. Um, the one that says skinny because the second's hand, you know, the second's hand attaches to that. And that's why that you just need to be really careful because it, it's got to step down. It, it, it goes and it steps down. From when the minute hand, uh, second hand's going to get to be really delicate with that, so you don't, you don't bust it, you don't break it. So that's the uh, the fourth wheel. Then we come to the third wheel. Again, these pivots are so delicate. Try not to grab it from the pivot. Sometimes you just can't. So just grab it, and try not to grab it from the gears. Sometimes you can't. I know that you know some. You know, there's you know there's a general rule of thumb, and then there's the but I can't I can't get it any other way. Try to not to grab these wheels or, or gears from the pivots and from the edge like that. You know like this because that you don't want to put a nick or, or or snap off one of those teeth. So you know if you're gonna grab it from the edge then grab it like that flush so there's less likelihood of you breaking anything or um or you can just grab it from one of the spokes and that's the third wheel and just checking those pivots they look all good put them in my little parts tray okay sure and then we um we'll take off the escape wheel and have a look at that you know, I thought this would be a lot more dirty than what it is. It's actually pretty okay. Very dry, I think. But, you know, pretty clean. Like, although there was a bit of crap and crud in there, it wasn't like, you know... I reckon this was probably... I don't know. I don't know how long my neighbour's had it in his garage for. You know, to be honest, he's a bit like me. He's got stuff in his garage that's probably been sitting in there for... He was a bit older than me. He's probably had stuff sitting in his garage for, you know, 25, 30 years. But I don't know how long this has been there, but it's in pretty good nick, to be honest. All right. So that, that took away that. And then there's another bridge here, which is the um, um, center wheel bridge, which holds, obviously, on the center wheel. So we'll take that off. And, you know, you tend to find that with movements of a better quality. And, like, again, I'm just talking about from very, very small experience. That the, the nicer the movement, the more bridges and the easier they are to pull apart. Apart from there being, you know, a lot of complications with the watch, which obviously takes it to a different level, you will find that the nicer the movement is, it'll have, you know, a central wall bridge, then it'll have the main bridge, then it'll have, you know, it's they're pretty easy to pull apart. They're not like those those cheap movements, like that cheap Chinese movement that I had. And no, no disrespect to the Chinese, they just they just it's they just make for a budget, right? 
that you got know, one plate that does everything, holds everything down, holds down the uh, all the the main gears and you know everything, and holds down the automatic winding, and they they're made for a budget. But because they're made for a budget and they're not made, to, I don't believe they're made to be serviceable. Um, yeah, they're a little bit harder to work on. And again, I'm not um, I'm not telling you all to grab grab your you know your Rolexes and your Patek Philippe's out there and start you know putting them apart because they're now this thing here is on a bit tight. And I'm just having a look if it's binding on anything. And it's not, I'm just, I just want to get, you know, I'll, do, I'll grab the really big screwdriver, the big 3 mil one, that will get some leverage on that, and I can just, well, there you go, just, yeah, she's just, just on there a bit tight, but again, there you go, just put it, put it to the side, if you can, just so you don't damage that, that'll just come off, and that's jeweled as well, so that can go in there. Alright, maybe I shouldn't have taken that off that early because I can't take it off because the uh, ratchet gear is uh, is there, but that's okay. Just have a bit of a just have a bit of a play around. How we're we looking for time. I just don't want these videos to go for too much too long. I don't want them to go too far over the 30 minute mark. Alright, grab your um Now, that is really loose. That was really loose. That was the, um, that was the ratchet gear. That was ratchet gear screw. Now just get your, get your either piece of pegwood or your brass tweezers and just jam it in there. In there and undo it in one of the gears and undo it. And I was looking, I was looking for the tweezers on my other hand, right? That's how. And where am I going to put this? I will put this. Now, this will be a left hand thread, the um, crown thing. Yeah, the crown. That was the obviously the ratchet, the ratchet wheel screw, normal right hand thread. The crown wheel screw are normally left hand threads, so left hand to do up, right hand to take off, which this one is as well. That's a funky looking. Right, let me just so that one and that one. There's. The, um, and you generally find that um, the screws, apart from being left and right hand thread for the for the um, ratchet wheel and the um, crown wheel, the um, the ratchet wheel are longer as well because they've got to go all the way through because they screw into the go go through the ratchet wheel and go through to the um, barrel arbor. But this one here is a bit funky. This one here is it. I see. There's a again. You see. That's why you got to be careful. And it's the same with the Salita movement. See, there's I'll put that one away before I lose it. That's the uh, ratchet. So there's a shim. I just I thought it was a bit funny. So that's why you can see me careful. It was on there. Like I thought well, that looks like it was countersunk, but it says that there's a, a bushing. See that? Again, that's probably probably two mil. Two mil. You know, you're gonna you lose that, and then this will here because as you can see, see that gear? See, it's um, got a bigger hole in it. So, without that shim, without that shim, you are not going to be having a good day. Just check if there's anything under there. Just be careful with this here because I don't know. Just I don't know what to expect. Yeah, there's a there's a the the kick spring. Is under these. That's why I've just been careful doing it, taking off slowly because you know you know there's a click spring there somewhere, and you don't want it flinging because you know you can have all sorts of fun of trying to find it. Now that click spring is. Can we take that off before we take? So it looks like it goes up and around and down into that little slot. So. Okay. 
Okay, so let me just let me just take a photo of that, just so I know the orientation of it. I know that people are probably thinking, listen man, that's obvious. It might be obvious to you, but not so obvious to me. Yep, just want to double check that. Photo takes 10 seconds to do and it'll save you about an hour of stuffing around. Right, so that's that off. That was the click spring. And you can just see just a bit of yuck under there, a bit of probably dried up oil and stuff. Okay. There we undo the click. Take that off as well. Just noting that there is um, a recess in that and the recess faces up because that? Well, the recess faces up because um, the screw goes into it and there's a little really really small you won't pick them or maybe you will but there's a really really small little nub on the end there okay that's all right all right nothing else to write home about and then we'll take Oh, that won't come off either. See, again, my my lack of experience, and you can't take that center wheel off anyway, uh, or or the that'll be the second wheel because it's driven by um, the barrel, and that's held on friction fit held on from the other side by the cannon pinion. So I probably should have left that bridge on, and and um, taken the cannon pinion off first. But that's okay. That's all right. That is fine. Um, what I will do though is I will. No, since I've got on this, I was gonna. I'll take off the. Um, take off the um, the barrel bridge. Okay, the two screws in there, and where will I put that little thing? So I don't know if my head, my head's getting in the way. If it is, I, I do, and my fingers. If they are, I, I just, I do apologise. Um, I really do apologise, but it's just the way, unfortunately, it's going to be. Put them out, keep them all together. Now, like I said before, I should actually have more of an idea and look at these screws a bit more. Because most of these screws look the same size, these these bridge screws look the same size, and I should have more of an idea. Sorry, I'm just fluffing around here. I just put something in the wrong area. Sorry, I looked at as I, as I was as I was talking, I was just looking up. I just noticed that I had one of the bridges in a different compartment. Although the screws look the same, I'm not entirely sure. Again, this has got a couple little uh, indents on there. Maybe this was serviced. I don't know. Maybe Rob hasn't had it that long. Flip her over. Have a look. Because she's really clean. She's really clean. And yeah, maybe I shouldn't have taken that off. Because you know why? Let me just go back and scrub that from the record. Um, I probably shouldn't have taken that off. And I'll tell you why. Um... Because when I undo, when I undo, when I when I take off the cannon pinion, uh, and that wheel falls out, that um, that barrel is going to fall out as well, and you know, I don't think it's good practice to have things just you know randomly drop out. So let me just let me just I'll just put one. I'll just put one screw in there and I'll just do it up lightly just so it holds it in place. Right now we'll just take her off, turn around, turn around, turn around. And we'll just get my grubby fingers on it. Have a little bit of a look. Yep. 
Okay. Now I've got my um, Canon Pinion tool. Give that a bit of a, a look see. Right. Yeah, I don't like this stupid tool. But I want to master it, though. You know, I should not have should not have bought this because I'm not getting any grip. Let me just try one more time. Sorry, I'm lifting it up. I'm not getting any grip on that. that. I don't know. Maybe there's a maybe they are different. Look at them. Maybe there are different ones for about 30 minutes now. I'm not gonna. I should end the video. Maybe they're, they're different to Canyon Pinion, Canon Pinion tools, one for clocks and pocket watches. I mean, pocket watches and. Oops, and now that's come off. Come on, get it together. Don't get angry. Right now, we just, we just, this is another Canon Pinion tool here. And she just came off. Wonderfully with that, and this is like a I've shown, I've shown this before. It's a Presto, Presto one. Um, I don't know what I think it's a number five. I think from memory, don't quote me, but the Presto tool that got it off. Hey Presto, just like that. Um, I will put that in a different tray with the um, with the um motion works which is on this side okay so that's got that side done i'm not gonna this one's gonna go a little bit over 30 minutes because i'm just about there and i'm just dribbling on a bit now that that means that that should free that that um center wall should be free now because the canon pinion is a uh, yeah so there you go that's a real chunky looking one as well because of the that that takes a lot of a lot of pressure a lot of torque so it probably needs to be a bit chunky and it holds the um that holds the minute wheel on there that's that one there come and rip off the um i'll just move a bit quicker just so we're not going too far over 30 minutes um take that off that bridge will just pop right off like it did the first time Again, just double check right, and that means that we can take off the barrel, and that'll just come straight off, and that'll come straight off. He says, and it doesn't. Why not? What have I done wrong? Not held in by anything, is it? And then I've probably got people screaming out to me saying, "No, you've no, 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 it does come off. It's just a bit. It's just, it's just a really tight, snug fit." Whoop. And she just rolls away. There you go. Barrel off. Okay. Now flip her over. And we will take off the... Um, we will take off the, um, the rest of the... Um, Keyless works and the, the 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 rest of the um the motion works. You know what? I will I will end the video here so I can just do it because you now we might find something that you know we might want to talk about. So I'll I'll end the video now, um, and we'll come back and do that final one. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you think that you're getting anything out of this. Leave some comments below. Tell me what you think. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll be back to finish the disassembly of this movement. Bye.